Okay, our goal in this video is to calculate the sum um, from n equals zero to infinity of n over two to the n a few different less common ways. So before we get started, I wanna point out that this sum starting at zero is the same star sum as the sum starting at one because the first term here is zero. So we're gonna make use of a couple of tools. The first one is this thing called the forward di difference operator. So it's defined as follows. The forward difference operator of a sequence fn is defined, we'll say this delta fn is fn plus one minus fn. And you can think of this as like the derivative of, the, of a sequence. So the next tool that we're gonna need is this summation by parts formula. So this is a summation version of the classic integration by parts formula. So notice we have the sum of a n delta b n, and then this is uh, some terms of the a's and the b's, and then it's written in terms of this b n delta a n. So we have something like u times dv, and this would be like uv evaluated to endpoints, and now we have v du. So this looks exactly like an integration by parts formula. Okay, so now let's look at this proof. It's pretty simple, it just involves pulling out a couple of terms and then re-indexing. So let's start with the left-hand side. So we have the sum n equals zero to m of a n delta b n. So by the definition of this forward difference operator, this is the sum n equals zero to capital M of a n and then we have b n plus one minus b n okay great and now we can split this into two sums so this is the sum n equals zero to infinity of a sorry n equals zero to m of a n b n plus one minus the sum n equals zero to m of a n b n Okay, good, and now what we want to do is pull the last term out of this sum and the first term out of this sum. So that's going to give us the following. So the last term out of this sum is a m b to the b m plus 1. And then the first term out of this sum is a0, b0, but that one's attached to a minus sign. So look, we've gained what's in parentheses already. Good, and now the next thing that we can do is rewrite the sums uh, missing the first, the last term and the first term. So now this is gonna be the sum n equals zero to m minus one of a n b n plus one. Good, and now this one is gonna be the sum n equals one to m of a n b n. Okay, great, and <clears throat> And now we're gonna re-index this sum. So we're gonna let n be re-indexed by n plus one over there. And notice that's gonna give us the following. So we have a m b m plus one minus a zero b zero. That's good. Now notice this is already in the form that we want on that right hand side. So we're not gonna touch that. We have the sum n equals zero to infinity of a n b n plus one, sorry, the sum to m minus one. Good, and then finally after re-indexing, that's gonna turn this into the sum n equals zero to m minus one of a n plus one b n plus one. Good, but now notice we can put these together, factor a minus sign out, and then we have a n, n plus one minus a n, which is exactly the forward difference operator of a n, so we can jump right to the end. We have a m b m plus one minus a naught b naught minus the sum n equals zero to m minus one of b n plus one, so we get that from factoring a b n plus one out. Good, then we'll factor a minus out of the whole thing. And then le we're left with a n plus one minus a n, but that's exactly the forward difference operator of a n. Okay, so now we've proven this proposition. So now we can easily calculate the sum of this series using this summation by parts uh, formula.
Okay, so now that we've proven this summation by parts formula, which is like integration by parts for sums, we're going to calculate the sum n equals zero to infinity of n over two to the n using the formula, and we're gonna do that as if it were an improper integral. So we're gonna calculate the limit as m goes to infinity of the sum n equals zero to m of n over two to the n, again using summation by parts. And so there's a trick to get started, and that trick to get started is the following. We can write this as the limit as m goes to infinity of the sum n equals 0 to infinity of minus n. So, and then we're going to multiply that by 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, great. And then it's easy to check that this is equal to minus 1 over 2 to the n. So the minus signs cancel and we get back to the original sum. But writing it like this allows, it, allows us to see it as these uh, uh, sequences with these forward difference operators. So here we can let a n be the sequence minus n. And we can let b n be the sequence 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. And notice this is a n delta b n. Okay, great. But now that we have that, we can apply the summation by parts formula. And so that's going to give us this limit as m goes to infinity of... <clears throat> So a m b m plus 1, so that's going to be minus m over 2 to the m, good, minus a 0 b 0, so notice a 0 is 0, so we have minus 0, good, and now we have minus the sum n equals 0 to m minus 1 of b n plus 1, so that's going to be 1 over 2 n, and then delta a n, so let's check what delta a n is. So we have minus n plus one minus minus n. So just as a heads up, this is delta a n, but then also notice that this is minus one. Okay, good. So now that's what we have using the summation by parts formula. So let's see what it simplifies down to. So this is the limit as m approaches infinity of minus m over 2 to the m. And now notice that's going to be minus 1. That's going to cancel this minus sign here to give us a plus the sum n equals 0 to m minus 1 of 1 over 2n. Okay, good. But now what we can see is that as m goes to infinity, this bit is going to go to zero because we have an exponential downstairs. We have a polynomial type things, thing upstairs. And then as m goes to infinity, m minus 1 also goes to infinity. So that allows us to write this as the sum n equals zero to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n. Great. But now that's a geometric series, so we can easily sum this geometric series as 1 over 1 minus the common ratio. In other words, 1 over 1 minus half, which gives us 2, which is the expected solution to this sum. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up the board, and then we're going to look at one more way to get this sum. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to look at this sum one more way. So we're going to look at it with the sequence of partial sums. So again, our goal is the sum n equals 0 to infinity of n over 2 to the n. So let's let the mth partial sum be the sum n equals 0 to m of n over 2 to the n. And I'll claim that this mth partial sum is equal to 2 minus m plus 2 over 2 to the m. And you might say, well, how would you get a formula like that? And you could get it using this technique that we just did with the forward difference operator and their summation by parts, or you could guess and check until you guess the formula and then prove it by induction, which is what we're going to do. So, uh, and just recall, when you're doing a proof by induction, you first need to do the base case. And so we'll take as our base case m equals 1, although you could take m equals 0 as your base case as well. But let's take m equals 1, and now notice that uh, the sum n equals 0 to 1 of n over 2 to the n equals 1 half. Okay, great. But that's also equal to 2 minus 
3 over 2, which equals 2 minus 1 plus 2 over 2 to the 1, which is of this formula. Okay, great. So now uh, let's do our induction hypothesis. So let's suppose this is true for um, an arbitrary m, maybe m equals k. Good. And then the next thing that we're going to do is check for k plus 1. So let's look at the sum n equals 0 to k plus 1 of n over 2 to the n. So that's going to be the sum n equals 0 to k of n over 2 to the n plus the k plus first term, which is k plus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1. Okay, good. And now the next thing we notice is by our induction hypothesis, we know that this equals 2 minus k plus 2 over s over 2 to the k. Now we're going to add k plus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1 to that. Okay, good. And now uh, we need to find a common denominator, so we'll multiply this by 2 and this by 2, so that's going to give us 2 minus 2k plus 4 over 2k plus 1 uh, plus k plus 1 over 2k plus 1. But now notice when you do all of that simplification, you get the following. This is 2 minus um, k plus 1 plus 2 over 2 to the k plus 1, which again follows this form that we uh, claim it should be. So in other words, we've proven that this is the closed form of the sequence of partial sums using a proof by induction. Okay, so now we can finish it all off uh, super quickly. So we can do the sum n equals 0 to infinity of n over 2 to the n equals the limit as m goes to infinity of the sequence of partial sums, which we just proved was of this form. So we have 2 minus m plus 2 over 2 to the m. Good. And then again, because here we have an exponential downstairs and we have a polynomial type thing upstairs, we know that the exponential is going to dominate and this is going to send this equal to zero. So that means we get two as the final answer.